All right, hello and welcome to another video of Measure School where we teach you the tactics, tips, tacks, and tactics of today's digital marketing world. And we have a new intro, so I'm uh, a bit confused about the words just quite yet. Um, welcome to this live stream where we're gonna talk about the new YouTube trigger within Google Tag Manager. And we are streaming uh, live to Facebook and YouTube. So this is um, a task for my computer right now. And we're gonna find out if uh, everything works and we can uh, make this work. Now in this uh, little tutorial, we're gonna go through the new YouTube um, GTM trigger. Uh, what does that mean? Well. Beforehand, before this trigger came out, you basically needed to put, set up a custom listener for your YouTube videos in order to track them on your website. And this is now possible through an inbuilt method of Google Tag Manager because they have released a new trigger called uh, the YouTube trigger, basically. Um, let's take a look at what this would look like. So if we uh, are here on our demo shop, we are able now to track this YouTube video. This was um, released um, on the 12th of September, so uh, just a few days ago, three days ago. And we now have a YouTube video trigger and YouTube video uh, variables. Now, um, how do you actually set this up? In Google Tag Manager itself, we get this new trigger here. So if you go to trigger, we see that we have a new trigger, uh, the YouTube video trigger. So we can click on that and we get a lot of different variables here. Um, I will just name this YouTube trigger for now. And we can capture different um, mechanisms here within uh, the interface of Google Tag Manager and then with this trigger as well on our page. So we can um, capture the start, the complete of the video. So once the video started, um, the actual user clicked on start or it completed. Uh, the pause, the seeking and the buffering, which uh, is quite useful and the actual progress. Now, um, there's a little question mark here because we can actually choose whether we want to push events in, when do we want to push events basically into the data layer so we can pick that up after a certain percentage, so 10, 25, 50, 75, or after a time threshold, so after 10 seconds, for example, if that is of interest to us. Now, I will go with the um, percentage here and we just need to put in whatever we deem necessary. So for example, 25, 50, 75, and 100. And then we are all set. We can go to the advanced option. Now in this advanced option, we'll be able to um, choose whether we want to automatically detect whether the JavaScript API is turned on. Now, if you just go onto a YouTube video, just like this one, I embedded this um, this way. So you just go to the share option here and then you go on embed. And if you just copy this code, you don't have actually the JavaScript API turned on. Now you can choose whether Google Tag Manager should turn that on by default for you. So you can click that and I would um, click it if uh, you haven't um, necessarily put this in uh, into the variable here with the JavaScript API. So um, just click on this uh, by default and then you can choose obviously your um, your filter options. If you have any filter options, if you only want to deploy this on certain pages, you can do this um, right there. All right, um, that should do it. We'll just fire this on all pages and save this. Now, in order for this all to work, we actually have some new variables, some new built-in variables. So if you go to this configure menu and scroll down, we see here our video variables. And uh, these will give us information and push them into the data layer. Now, it's interesting that they are called video variables because that would hint at, well, maybe we'll at some point get a built-in trigger for Vimeo videos or for Wistia videos. Uh, which will also be a great addition, but obviously YouTube is first. So um, let's go with that. Um, so we have that now enabled and we should be able to go into our preview and debug mode here and go to our page where we have our video embedded and it should now when we start playing it, push an event into the data layer. So we now here have a GTM video. Now I'm gonna pause this and we see there's another event here. Now let's uh, look a little bit closer at this event. What does it actually push into the data layer? 
a lot of information here, um, like an auto event trigger. We now have the video provider, video status, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is obviously also pushed into our variables by default. So our video variables are now filled with all that information. So that's great. And we can now um, pick that up and build a trigger of that. So if you only wanted to fire a certain tag after a given time, we could do that. We could also pass it onto our tags here. That is also possible and we'll do this in a second. Now let's take a look at these video variables. So we have the current time. So uh, when did this actually fire? So this should actually fire uh, right afterwards after I, I clicked on stop here. Um, we have the, um, the duration obviously. So this is the full duration of the video. So 11 minutes 14. We have the um, video percentage. So this is, would be 1%, 0%, 1%, 1%, okay. We have the provider, YouTube. Well, this won't actually change unless you fill it differently here. Um, we have the video status. So what is the status right now? The pause, the buffering, uh, as I talked about it before. We have the video title. Um, this is very good if you have multiple videos like we have on here. This is something we're gonna check out in a, in a minute. Um, and we have the video URL, uh, also very important if we wanted to see it, and the video visibility. Now, uh, the question is, what is this actually? So let's go to the um, video variables here. Can we see that? The visibility is key, which sets YouTube to be set to truth. Ah, okay. So if the video is not in the viewport and the user needs to scroll down first, um, this will be set to false, I guess. Uh, this is what it says at least. And then we will have that available. Uh, once the um, video comes into the viewport, it will be set to visible. So maybe that's something if you play a video and then scroll out of the frame, I guess uh, that's what it's for. Um, anyways, um, now we can take these variables actually and uh, build a tag with it. So let's go ahead and build a simple Google Analytics tag. Now this will be a Google Analytics event tag with the um, values of, um, let's say just YouTube. This is the scope of YouTube videos. Uh, as a tag, we tag the universal analytics and we'll go ahead and uh, use an event here. And now we can put in our category. I would say we're just hard coded as video view. Then we would have our action and there we can choose um, whatever variables we have available. Now I would like to go with the actual video title so I know which video was seen. And um, let's say we wanted to fire this, um, um, the percentage. So we wanna know the percentage of this video view. Um, and maybe, well, we could put the percentage actually into the value field and let's put into the label field our uh, status. Let's put the status in here. That would make sense. Um, Non-interaction hit should be set to true um, because you don't want to uh, mess up your bounce rate here. So this doesn't have anything to do with page view. So let's do that. Um, and as a Google Analytics settings variable, uh, I already have uh, defined our UA demo here. Now, this is nothing else than um, our UA code. So uh, if you click on, I, I just um, put in here our UA code. I always get these questions for, for some reason. And then we can choose our trigger and we have our YouTube trigger. So we'll go with that. Let's save this and preview and debug this whole thing. Go into our page here. This is all pretty small. And uh, let's play this video. So now we see our GTM video view and we see our event uh, firing. So now we should get in our Google Analytics some real-time events. Let's see. Here's our real-time event. Obviously, this is only visible in the last, minute, uh, in the last 30 minutes because we choose this um, non-interaction hit true. We have the video. And we should have the event label. Now, can we see the value? Not in the real-time reporting. So that will be uh, put in later into our event report. So you can always look at this and um, the behavior and event reports right here as well. Cool. Um, so this works and it should fire more because I'm still playing this video. So let's see. Um, after 25%. So let's actually use this little trick here and um, speed this a bit up. 
Okay, what do we have here? Um, pause. Okay, I didn't really pause. I skipped forward. So this is, uh, there's some downsides to this uh, trigger, definitely. You need to know how to interpret these numbers. So uh, you need to know how you can actually see. Now we are at 27%. Uh, let's go with a shorter video here. And the great thing about this trigger, it actually works with different videos. So um, this video is only one minute long. Um, let's speed through it here. And we'll be able to uh, assess whether our trigger works correctly. So here we saw that an event was pushed automatically after the 25% mark, uh, exactly how I defined it in the trigger as well. And that is uh, working again here. Um, we have the percentage of... 59%, why was that? Um, okay, so this is a progress. So you, you can obviously um, change your triggers around if you wanted to um, only do progress tracking, uh, I would I would recommend to go into the trigger and actually um, build in a filter where you say, okay, um, here are our filters, only at some videos we wanna do this where our uh, um, status is actually the progress, right? So then you have progress tracking, only this progress tracking, and it would only update once you hit this 25%, 50%. Now, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the downsides of this. Um, so what you need to know is when you look at these variables and they get filled because somebody watched the video, then these are not the actual, so when you see 60%, for example, this doesn't mean that the user has actually watched 60% of your video. It just means he hit that point of 60% uh, at some point. Um, so uh, just to illustrate this a little bit more, if I skip forward here, we have new events here, and I also hit the 60 or uh, this uh, current time 51, and I hit 100%. Uh, that doesn't mean I have watched the whole video, right? I have skipped forward. So only if you just hit these points, you already um, um, provocate this or, or propagate this event into the data layer. And therefore, when you look at those numbers, it is a strong indicator that the user has um, skipped that point somewhere or hit that point where maybe you have the sales message in the video and um, he saw that, but it doesn't mean that he actually saw the whole video through and saw everything what was beforehand. So, um, it's not really accurate when you wanted to do a kind of like a um, scroll progress tracking here. Okay, um, so this is great. If you want to find out more about this new video trigger, Simo Ahava has written up um, a great blog post already and um, with much more detail than I went through. He also built a custom JavaScript variable that uh, would do this um, uh, rename, so to say, the, the standard um, progress tracking events. Um, and he also goes into how you could track lazy loading uh, videos. So if you have some kind of plugin running that does this automatically, this is um, something you would need to check out if this doesn't work for you by default. Okay, um, I hope this uh, little tutorial helped you out a bit um, and, and showed you the capabilities of this new YouTube uh, tracking technique. Um, with an inbuilt trigger, in my opinion, now now forward, if you want to track a YouTube video, you should go that route because it's the build-in method. So it's more reliable, more um, yeah, it's more reliable than a custom listener, so to say. For some cases, you might still want to use the custom listener because you're more flexible with the JavaScript. But uh, if they are uh, built-in capabilities, um, it's the same with the templates that you have available. So why would you use a custom HTML tag? Um, if there's a tech template available. With these triggers, you will be able to uh, make your implementation more future-proof. So if you have a YouTube trigger already installed somehow onto your page, I would actually uh, recommend to replace that with this new trigger. Um, all right, I gave you some, some more um, uh, resources that you can check out on, on YouTube. I will also link them up below as always. And um, if you like this video, then Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel right over there because we'll bring you new videos just like this one. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time. All right, guys.